Now I've reviewed my share of Surface products over the years, whether it be the Surface Pro line, whether it be the Surface Laptop line, the Surface Book line, I think you get the drift. So when Microsoft recently announced the brand new Surface Laptop Studio, a much needed follow-up to the Surface Book line, I quickly jumped on it and ordered mine and I received it today. Yes, this is a pretty interesting design, not an original design since we've seen the HP Elite Folio and the Acer Concept D have that pull forward type design, that easel type design, we've seen it before. But it's pretty interesting to see this on a Surface Laptop device and it also has the Core i7 11370H, that's a four core processor. It also has the RTX 3050 Ti, a discrete GPU. Let's see if this all comes together to make this a winner. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my unboxing and first look at the brand new Surface Laptop Studio. Coming up. And as we take a look at the specs in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Microsoft, I'm not being sponsored by Microsoft, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Microsoft is not getting copy approval. They're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this unit was purchased with my own money. I did not receive a review unit from Microsoft. Pricing starts at $1,599.99. For those interested, I'll leave a link in the description below for more information and where you can buy one. Now, my unit has the Core i7 11370H processor. That's a four core, eight thread processor. It also has 16 gigabytes of LPDDR4X RAM, and it has the RTX 3050 Ti GPU, and that comes in at $2,099.99. Again, for those interested, check out that link below. And with the specs and pricing out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. Lifting the lid, you're greeted by the unit itself. We'll get to that in just a moment. You get some warranty information along with a setup guide. And you get your power adapter. It's 102 watts and uses a Surface Connect proprietary port. And you get the extension cord as well. And you'll notice that platform design on the bottom. That's going to house the air vents. And I'm not sure how I feel about it so far, but overall build quality has been excellent with this design. Now, this is a pretty portable 14 inch laptop that you can take with you on the go. It's not too heavy and it does pack a GPU inside. As I mentioned, it's the RTX 3050 Ti. So this does pack a little punch, although not quite as powerful as some other laptops I've reviewed as of late. Now the casing is magnesium and aluminum. It is rock solid, very sturdy, built really well, and the color is platinum. Okay, let's check out the port selection. Let's start off on the left side. We get two USB-C Thunderbolt 4 ports, and that is a welcome addition, of course. They are full-service ports that do data charge and display out. And on the right side is your Surface Connect port and a 3.5 millimeter headset jack. Notably missing, there's no SD or micro SD card reader. And especially if you're a content creator, I think that's a missing port. And it also doesn't have a USB-A port. Kind of wish it had that as well. All right, let's talk about the design. This is nothing new. We've seen this design before, most recently with the HP Elite Folio that I took a look at. I'll leave a link in the description below if you haven't checked it out. We also saw it with the Acer Concept D a few months back, but it's new for Microsoft. And I think it's a nice departure from the detachable that we saw with the Surface Book. You have the stage mode, and then of course you have the studio mode here on this laptop. And it's okay. The hinge could be more sturdy. I think it's a little bit too loose my opinion but so far it's working okay you can use it with your surface pen now i have the original surface pen and by the way it works perfectly fine with this but i do have that surface slim pen too on the way to the studio this week and i will include it in my upcoming full review so stay tuned but so far taking notes with that original surface pen sketching out artwork all worked well remember it uses that n-trig pen technology microsoft pen protocols that they call it right now and again it worked really well now you can charge and store that Surface Pen 2 on the underside as you see here, but I don't have it yet. Of course, I will show it when I do get it, but the original Surface Pen also sticks magnetically to it. Won't charge it, of course, because it does use one quadruple A battery, but you can store it there pretty convenient. 
And for those wondering, yes, you can open the lid with one finger. Now, once you do open the lid, you're greeted by that keyboard. And I got to say, this is an excellent keyboard. I like the tactile feedback. I like the key travel. And so far, very impressed with how comfortable it is to type on with this. And I look forward to using it even more to bring you more information in my full review. But so far, this is an excellent keyboard. Good job on that front. And it also has a multi-stage backlight. The keys light up white against the dark gray keys, and it worked pretty well, allowing you to get work done in a dark room or a dimly lit environment. I look forward to testing it out even more. And I'm absolutely loving the touchpad on this because it's a haptic engine touchpad, kind of similar to what you get on the MacBook Pro and the like. And I really do like it so far. Two-finger scrolling has been buttery smooth. All the gestures are working as you'd expect. This is one of the better or maybe even one of the best implementations of a haptic feedback engine on a touchpad on the Windows side of things. We'll talk more about it in the upcoming full review. And this is what the clicks sound like. Now, as far as the display is concerned, what we're looking at here is a 14.4 inch pixel sense flow display with a refresh rate up to 120 hertz, according to Microsoft. It has a resolution of 2400 by 1600. And for those keeping score, that's 201 pixels per inch. And it has a three to two aspect ratio. I happen to really like that three to two aspect ratio. It's a taller nature in terms of the display. You'll get more done. You'll see more on the display. You'll do less scrolling when it comes to web browsing and it's also a Dolby Vision display enhancing the viewing experience especially when you're watching movies you're looking at some really deep black some excellent contrast good white points and it has a very good color accuracy as you can see from the Delta E score it also covers the color gamut really well as you can see from the numbers and it's a bright display coming in at 418 nits. But one thing to keep in mind, it is a glossy display. You will notice some glare and reflections in certain lighting conditions. Again, something you need to be aware of. And underneath the display is a fabric-like material where the hinge would be. And it's okay. It's got a nice texture to it. Gives it a nice classy look. I have no complaints regarding that. But I did find that loose hinge a little bit annoying. That's something we'll talk about in the upcoming full review. So this is the front-facing camera on the brand new Surface Laptop Studio. It's a 1080p, 30 frames per second webcam. How does it look? How does it sound as far as these internal mics? Let me know in that comment section below. What about the quality? Is it good for Zoom? Is it good for your work from home needs? Let me know in that comment section below. Now, as far as the memory is concerned, you can get it with either 16 or 32 gigabytes of LPDDR4X RAM, and it's running in dual channel mode. But one thing to note, it is soldered in. That means you cannot, as the user, upgrade it yourself. But theoretically, you can upgrade the SSD if you go to a Microsoft certified technician because the SSD is upgradable, as you see here. It's slotted in. It's not soldered in, and that is good news. But again, as the user, you really can't get in it yourself. I'm not really sure how you would open it up. I'm looking into it. I'll let you know if I find out any more information. And of course, check out iFixit. They seem to always delve deep into these laptops. So stay tuned for their video, hopefully coming soon. And my unit has 512 gigabytes of PCIe NVMe SSD storage. And it did okay in terms of the reads, decent writes, but I've seen better, not the fastest out there. And it has Wi-Fi 6 along with Bluetooth 5.1. And so far, both are working pretty well. I haven't had any issues. If I do run into any issues, I will let everybody know. And I'm assuming it's also soldered into the motherboard. I don't believe you will be able to, as the user, get inside this laptop to upgrade it yourself. But it is probably soldered in. And as far as the processor is concerned, it's running 11th gen Tiger Lake processor from Intel, the Core i7 11370H. It's a four core, eight thread processor. We've seen it before, definitely not the fastest out there, but definitely a good mobile processor, a good choice if you don't wanna to generate too much heat and you wanna keep the weight down. So they decided to go with that. It also has the NVIDIA RTX 3050 Ti discrete GPU, and the numbers have been pretty decent. As you can see from these initial benchmarks, definitely not the fastest laptops we've seen as of late. I've seen a lot faster, but this is, of course, not the only story with this laptop. You want to get portability. You want to get good battery life. These are all things I will test in the upcoming full review. But so far, these initial benchmarks are pretty decent, not groundbreaking, not mind-blowing. 
Now, this has a 56.3 watt hour battery. Microsoft claims the Core i5 model will get up to 19 hours and the Core i7 up to 18 hours. I don't think we're going to get close to that, but of course, I will give you the actual numbers in my upcoming full review. Now, this has quad omnisonic speakers with Dolby Atmos. I would say they're okay. The sound is pretty good as far as the volume. The mids are decent, but it could use a little bit more bass, but it does get pretty loud. We'll talk more about this sound in the upcoming full review. Okay, let's bring it all home. What do I think about the brand new Surface Laptop Studio less than 24 hours in? And I gotta say, I do like it, although it is not a perfect laptop, but it does bring a lot to the table. I think a lot of people are gonna enjoy this pretty interesting design. It's got exceptional engineering, excellent keyboard, haptic pen. We're gonna talk more about that pen in the upcoming full review. Bright color accurate 120 hertz display, two Thunderbolt 4 ports, haptic touchpad, a 56.3 watt hour battery, a 1080p IR webcam for Windows Hello, actually pretty decent. Negatives here, no SD card reader. It is a reflective display. It gets kind of annoying sometimes. Switching positions is a little bit awkward and the audio could use a little bit more bass. I'll delve more into this in the upcoming full review, but I think overall initial impressions have been good with this and I look forward to putting it through its paces to bring you my full review coming very soon. So what do you think about the Surface Laptop Studio? I actually like it. I think it's a pretty interesting design. Like I said, not a unique design, but an interesting design nonetheless. It has that platform design where you have that heat vent on the bottom, giving it a platform. It helps dissipate the heat. We're gonna test the thermals. We'll test the performance, everything in my upcoming full review. We have a 56.3 watt hour battery. I'm curious to see how well that will do under heavy load, how well it would do when you're trying to save some energy. We'll see all those numbers, of course, in that full review. The display is very nice, a 14.4 inch, three to two pixel sense flow display, which is capable of 120 Hertz refresh rate. Looking good so far. Of course, I still have more testing to do with a starting price of $1,599, $2,100 as configured with my unit here today. Let me know what you think about the pricing. What do you think about what it offers in the segment? I think we've seen some more powerful laptops at a similar or maybe even cheaper price. Again, I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in that comment section below. Now, don't forget I have that Surface Slim Pen 2 coming to the studio this week. I will include that in the upcoming full review to see how all those new features work on this Surface Laptop Studio. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.